Stage 1, The Instinct. This is Consciousness 1.0, the original software that's been running for billions of years. It's the level of bacteria, worms, and early reptiles. It has no self-awareness, no hopes, no dreams, and certainly no existential dread about its student loans. Its entire world is a simple, elegant loop, stimulus, then response. Think of an amoeba. If it senses food, it moves toward it. If it senses a chemical threat, it moves away. That's it? There's no internal monologue, no weighing of pros and cons. It's a pure biological machine built for one purpose, don't die. This consciousness doesn't experience the world, it just reacts to it. It has the processing power of a potato, but it's incredibly effective. Now before you get too smug, remember that this little lizard brain is still your co-pilot and sometimes it grabs the wheel. Ever walk into a dark room and feel a sudden irrational panic? That's not your logical mind at work. Or when you touch a hot stove? You don't conduct a thoughtful risk assessment, weighing the benefits of warmth against the drawback of third-degree burns. You just yank your hand back. That's your reactor. In moments of pure panic or car skidding, the feeling of falling your higher brain functions shut down and this primal core takes over. It's not smart, but it's very, very fast. Stage 2. The Emotion Next, reality gets a software update. Feelings Welcome to Stage 2. The Pack Animal This is the world of mammals. From wolf packs to herds of elephants and, most relatably, your dog. A dog isn't just reacting to stimuli, it's experiencing a rich tapestry of emotions. It's genuinely happy you're home, sad when you leave, and deeply personally offended you didn't share your burrito. Emotions are simply advanced survival tools with a flair for the dramatic. Love isn't just a poetic concept, it's a biological mechanism that makes us protect our vulnerable offspring so they don't get eaten. Fear of being ostracized or in modern terms, getting unfriended makes us conform to group rules. It's all about social calculus. How do I stay safe within the tribe? At this level, we become deeply social creatures. We care sometimes a little too much about what others think of us. We follow leaders, form alliances and feel the sting of betrayal. That little jolt of anxiety when you think someone is mad at you. Or that warm fuzzy feeling when your post gets a lot of likes. That's your inner pack animal, running the show and constantly checking its social standing. It's powerful, it's necessary, but it's still driven by feeling, not logic. Stage 3. The Ego Here comes the big one. A monumental leap in the story of the mind. Imagine, for the first time, looking at your reflection in a pool of water and thinking, Wow, that incredibly complex, charming and slightly stressed out individual is me. Welcome to Stage 3. The Main Character this is the birth of the ego. The universe suddenly splits into two distinct parts, me and everything else. Consciousness is no longer just a collection of feelings and reactions. It has a center point. The ego is the narrator of your personal movie. It's the voice in your head that keeps a running commentary on your life, replays your most embarrassing moments on a loop at 3 a.m. and secretly believes it has a superior taste in music. This is fantastic for creating an identity. It's what motivates us to achieve goals, to build a life, to tell our story. But it's also the source of so much of our suffering. The ego gives us insecurity, jealousy, comparison, and the crushing feeling that your life isn't as glamorous as that influencers on Instagram. It's the part of you that believes you are separate from everyone and everything else, alone on your heroic journey. Stage 4. The Rationality So what does a main character do when life gets messy and unpredictable? It tries to control everything by making rules. This is stage 4. The Rule Maker this is where we develop symbolic and rational thought. We invent language to label the world, numbers to measure it, and complex philosophical arguments about whether a hot dog is technically a sandwich. Our thoughts are no longer stuck in the present moment. We can plan for the future by studying the past. An animal feels the coming of winter. A human at this stage charts the stars, creates a calendar, and invents agriculture. This stage is so powerful. It gave us science, law, art, and the internet. It built the pyramids and sent us to the moon. But this incredible tool has a dark side. The same rational mind that can compose a symphony can also rationalize hatred. The same logic that builds a hospital can be used to design a more efficient weapon. This is the stage where most of modern society operates, planning, explaining, organizing and worrying. It feels like the peak of awareness, but it's really just a very sophisticated system for managing the fears of the pack animal and the ambitions of the main character. Stage 5. The Reflection so we have all these rules, but are they good rules? Are they even our rules? Welcome to stage 5, the thinker. Here, consciousness turns inward. You're not just running the program anymore, you're looking at your own source code. The ego is no longer the undisputed director. It's more like a noisy, dramatic roommate you're finally starting to notice and question. 
you start asking the big questions. Why do I believe the things I do? Is what I'm doing truly right or just convenient? Was it actually cool for me to eat that last slice of pizza, even though nobody else got one? This is the birth of your conscience, your internal moral compass. You do the right thing not because a rule book or social pressure tells you to. That's stage two and four thinking, but because you can genuinely project yourself into someone else's experience. This is where true unconditional empathy is born. It's a quiet, introspective stage, but there's a twist. The more you reflect on life, the more you might grapple with a sense of despair or absurdity. You see the flaws in the systems, in yourself, and in the very nature of existence. It's the stage of the philosopher, pondering the strange reality of being a thinking creature on a spinning rock in space, worrying about emails. Stage six, the transcendence. What's beyond thinking about yourself, forgetting yourself completely? Welcome to stage six, the connector. In this stage. The main character's voice fades to a whisper. The ego, with all its needs and fears, finally takes a long overdue vacation. You start to feel like you're not just a wave in the ocean, but the entire ocean experiencing itself as a wave. The boundary between you and everything else, the tree outside your window, the stranger across the street, the stars in the sky gets incredibly thin and porous. People who experience this state, whether through deep meditation, profound moments of awe in nature, or other transformative experiences, talk about a feeling of deep peace and an overwhelming sense of unity. At this level, love becomes universal, not personal. Death feels less like an end and more like a transition. Identity fades, but awareness grows exponentially. Suddenly, the drama of daily life seems less like a personal crisis and more like an interesting TV show you're watching. The petty anxieties of the ego seem as distant as the concerns of a worm. Stage seven, the cosmic. All right, buckle up because this is where reality starts to get squiggly. The final theoretical stage is stage seven, the everything. This is pure speculation, so put on your tin foil hats. What happens when consciousness is no longer limited by the hardware of a squishy three-pound brain? Imagine being able to experience every possible timeline, every choice you ever made or could have made, all existing at once. Time ceases to be a river flowing in one direction and becomes a landscape you can view from any angle. It's like finishing the video game of reality and unlocking the developer console, where you can see all the code, all the potential outcomes, all at the same time. This could be a technological evolution, like merging with AI to become part of a collective digital soul, or it could be a spiritual one, a state of being that transcends physical form altogether. At this point, thought itself might evolve into something we can't even describe. It sounds like pure science fiction, but remember, every stage before this one was once an impossible leap. A worm, after all, would think a spreadsheet is pure, incomprehensible magic. So, which character are you right now? A reactor? A pack animal? A main character? The truth is, we're a mix of all of them, switching roles depending on whether we're in traffic, at a party, or staring up at the stars. But just knowing these stages exist is the first step to choosing which one you want to be. Thanks for watching, and stay aware of your awareness.